They're taking that dead pheasant out the front of that ambulance. Oh, and she's they? laughing and taking pictures. And there's feathers they're, they're everywhere. They're CPRing it. <laughs> oh, no, it was dead. Okay. Its neck was very slack. Oh, dear. Have you got someone on Twitter? I've got someone on Twitter. Pick one crappy, rusty barn find and tell me why you'd spend way too much money restoring it. Example, AMC Gremlin, Pontiac Aztec, Mercury Capri RS, Hugo Corral, and Alada Ni- Nivea. Which Nivea. <laughs> <laughs> the most moisturising of all the stuff. That would be cars. great if, N- if Nivea sponsored <laughs> Larda Nivas. That would be great. Um, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, pick one rusty, crappy barn find. They did... Are we supposed to pick one from that list? Well, I'm not sure. I'm going to just say, and this is from um, Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, who I know very well. What I would say, Nikki, if you wanted me to pick one of those, I'd pick an AMC Gremlin, and I'd probably be a Gremlin X, manual box V8, very rare. Ah, okay. If it was not that, and you wanted to go down the sort of like unloved, but let's just spend lots of money on it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, when when you're embarking on something, a restoration project of a car that you know you're not going to see a penny of it back. Oh, like it's, it's well, like the Morris weird. Eitel that was at the NEC back in yeah. November, and it had something like twelve thousand miles from new, and they'd done they'd just gone to town on it, mirrors under it. Yeah. It wasn't even top spec. It was just because it was somebody's mum's car, and it was like right. let's let's just go to town. Yeah. And I looked at it, and everyone was chuckling, and I was like, but it's great that somebody wants to do that. Yeah, even though the ITAL is dog it, shit, I do sort is. of ad- admire the fact that somebody's doing it. It's think only one person needs to do it, though. If lots of people start doing it, that, yeah. that feels like it's a cult or something. But yeah. just one person goes, look, somebody has to worry about this crap. Yeah, It's going to be me. Yeah, I'll just preserve... Pontiac Aztec. I mean, with the, with the rear I'd tent... I'd love to have a go in an Aztec. I've had a go. I've bought one. And did you, oh, for your for, for, you for a show, show in America, show, yeah. yeah. And I found a four-wheel drive one. It was called... What's it called? Quad, quadra... Tech or something, yeah, quadrac or Qu- yeah, quadrangle. Quad- um, <laughs> I had a had a four wheel drive. It, I imagine they just sort of very kind of like you know American. It's, it's your three litre super low Ron super lethargic. Is it? I bet it's not. Is it three litre or is it one of those mad three point ones that Americans always seem to just? It might be three point one. What's wrong with you? Just round it up a bit. Three point one. What? Three point. Yeah, it was what a three point something. Three point seven. Yeah, and it's and it it's was, probably it's okay. Yeah. 104 horsepower yeah. from three and a bit liters. Yeah, and but with the I didn't have the boot tent, the auxiliary boot. I tent. imagine the boot tent is quite a sought after and rare accessory these yeah. days, isn't it? But um, yeah, I'd go Aztec just for the shits and giggles. Insert which your names back again. Um, favorite meal deal? Uh, <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, I don't know. Favorite they meal deal? Good, Marks and Spencers good. do a really good three bean wrap. Yeah. Now. It can get a bit drafty afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. But it's got a really good salsa in it. There's lots of pulses, so it's good for energy. Mm. And I'm a veggie, so that's good. And it's dense. It's small but dense, and it's good road food. Okay. So it, you could safely drive an automatic car whilst chewing. Oh, it. okay. Yeah, that's always a consideration. When I say safely, I think, in my personal opinion, relative. I'm, I'm not going to endorse. You just want basically your meal deal has to be sandwich, crisps. I Drink. See, I, I do crisps less and less. Yeah, I like the I, veg- I like well. the veg the vegetable crisps. I mean, I say I do crisps less and less. I, you did see me troughing He's at just... high speed a bag of wheat crunchies. Wheat crunchies, like I had it a was... massive craving for them. I couldn't explain it on the way up. I was like, I'm was starving. it bacon flavour? Yeah, the sort of bacony. I mean, that's so primary school for me. Yeah, yeah, that's why I like that's it. That's strict Comforting. primary school. Uh, fifth gear out of here says uh, best prototype or car company exec daily you've heard of, like the McLaren F1 engine in a 7 Series, etc. I I hadn't heard of the McLaren F1 engine in a 7 Series, but um, best prototype well, that I've heard of for, for just madness, way back um, when the PAG, Premier Royal Motor Group, you know, when Ford had Aston and Jag and Lincoln and mm-hmm. Volvo. And, and they wanted to see if they could put a V12 in the Range Rover of the time, which is the the 2000s, early 2000s Range Rover. Oh, yeah. So the the you... nice looking one that mm. still looks nice. An L322. Yeah, I was just about to say, I can't remember the L number. Uh, and, I knew um, you bloody would. So they put an Aston V12 in one. Did they? Yes, but there were some problems. Uh, like, it, it left no room in. for the battery. So the battery apparently in this in this 
prototype was in the front passenger footwell. Okay. Obviously, they could tidy that up for production. But the bigger problem was there wasn't quite enough room for the front drive shafts. So it was a 450 horsepower V12 powered rear wheel drive Range Rover. That's as soon as it was born, it was pointless. Well, I guess if they thought it was worth it, they would have, you know, yeah. redoubled the sump or something to be able to get the drive shaft through. Mind but you, though, that is As that a lash like... up in a workshop <clears throat> at Gaydon, it was a rear wheel drive V12 Range Rover. And That's I a bet clear... that was hilarious to drive, but also quite frightening. That's like a clear 17 years before a Bentayga. Uh, yeah, of probably would which have been. Is, which is the. Is well, it, they... is that the first V12 SUV? Uh, no, because there was that V12. Uh, Q7 TDI. Oh yeah, the diesel. Yeah. And under BMW, they wanted to put the 7 Series V12 in the P38 Range Rover, and they were gonna. It had to, to fit it in. They had to change the nose, so it was going to have a different front design. There are some pictures of it online. You can see the proposal for it. But this has it never got, went anywhere. This has got Harry's garage on acid written all over. Yeah. It. Build the car that nobody <laughs> built yes. because it was fundamentally a bad idea. But let's do it anyway because. Uh, I'm going to read this question here from Russell Garris just because it's mental. Would you rather have a hand made out of ham or an armpit that dispensed sunscreen? <laughs> what? <laughs> armpit, obviously. I mean, that would be useful. Is it an armpit that dispensed sunscreen or a hand made of ham? Yeah. We well, see, I've got a dog. I can't have a hand made of ham. The dog would have at it while I was sleeping. It'd be horrible. <laughs> but it's, it depends. Does the armpit, is it constantly just spurting sun cream? Because that oh. would be annoying. You'd have to have a, have an have armpit have a, nappy. You would, wouldn't you? But if it just oh. you just go, oh, you're looking a little bit red there, mate. Hang on a sec. Well, you, imagine wiping your oh, yeah, armpit you and then people. putting it on a woman's forehead. I mean, super creepy. Super creepy. <laughs> yeah, it would have to. You have to explain it. First. But useful. Look, sorry about Especially that, but it was either that or the ham hand, and I. I, I don't want to be hand. attacked by magpies. Seriously. Ricardo Autobahn, why did so many Euro versions of British Leyland cars, Mini and Allegro for example, have front quarter lights? Smoking. Smoking. Um, smoking was the big deal back in the 70s, Smoking was 80s. more popular in France and Italy perhaps than it was in Britain. So Yeah, so you don't wind the window Tailored for local conditions. And the fag is, you do a demonstration, so if your fag was on your right hand yeah. and, and the car was right hand drive, Obviously. Oh yeah, quarter light. And if I was left hand drive and my left hand mm. had the SIG in, yeah. super close to the quarter light, because you know, small dashes back then. Quarter light sucks the naughty mm, smoke. That's out. the thing, they do have a sucking effect, don't they? They're quite Yeah. Uh, smoking windows as my brother calls them. Tony Stanford says, What's the most embarrassing car you've owned? You've owned a lot more I cars mean, than I have. I've right? owned a lot probably I mean it depends what your idea of embarrassing is, but I mean like gosh, I've owned a lot. I was, I was, I wasn't embarrassed of it, but so I don't, my Rover seventy five didn't garner a lot of respect from other road users. <laughs> I'll put it that way. <laughs> and you were a young man driving that. Yeah, I think I bought my seventy five. You in your twenties? Yeah, I was. Hang on, I was twenty eight, maybe when I bought my seventy five. Yeah. That's partly why I bought it, because I was like, I'm confounding expectation here. Yeah. No one in their twenties has a seventy five. I mean, obviously, some people do, but yeah. And, but it didn't. It didn't feel like it was sort of. You know, I nobody a, went. Hey, cool car. But people went nice car. Yeah. Smart car. Yeah. Not smart car, but you know what I mean. Uh, but mm. I, I think um, probably my most embarrassing was depending on who you talk to. I had a VW four twelve LS, which most people Did you? won't. Yeah. Oh. Which had been converted into a van, so it was an estate version. Right, yeah, and yeah. someone had converted it into a van, and it was a delivery vehicle for a Mexican delicatessen in Leeds. And it's and too, I, and too I, much information to take on board. <laughs> and I bought what? it. I did a straight swap with it for a for a VW for a burrito for a, recipe. And and it was it was green and white two tone, and the guy had put three spoke alloys on it. Quite oh, well, quite nineties. No, I mean, three it, spoke wheels never look good. This no, is just a fact. But it, I was I was quite um, quite poor at the time, and it was a cheap second car. And actually, it drove really well, but it was bodged and it was a bit. Rubbish. Did it still say like Los Jalantos on the? It sides. said Gringos Mexican Day. <laughs> And, I, and, I, and, and for a long time, I drove oh, it around with Gringo's Mason and Deli written on it <laughs> until I started to peel the decals off and, it, and then I realised you could spell ring can stone me. So I just put ring can... It just had ring can stone me written on the side. I drove that around for about a year. 
Yeah. Kids. I think it had expanding foam in one of the sills. Oh, almost certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Airwolf or Blue Thunder discuss? Probably Airwolf. I can't remember Blue Thunder very much. No, I, I know it was helicopter based, but yeah. I, um, I'm i going to say, just for the theme tune and also the man's eyebrows from Santini Airways. Yes. With the silk jacket. A, a, a blues on. Was it, or a bomber jacket? I'm never <laughs> quite sure. A, it was a bomber jacket. <laughs> it was a bomber with jacket. With some, with some amazing embroidery on the back. I can actually see you with the Santini <laughs> Airways jacket. <laughs> oh, well, now you've set that up, I might have to go and see if there's any on eBay. Um, and what's what was his name? Jean. Jean Michael Vincent. Who was an, uh, like an absolute stud in the 70s. Yeah, and there was a, uh, a woman, a dinner lady at my school, my junior school, who claimed that she was related to him. What? And it's only in retrospect, I think she might have been lying. <laughs> she was re- she was a dinner lady related to Jean Michael Yeah, it Vincent. seems implausible now. She was real sort of, you know, I don't want to speak ill of her, but she was a bit of a whole kind of old battle axe. I don't know, this was just her way of trying to ingratiate herself to the children. I've got to say. Because it was obviously prime airwolf time. It was the 80s. Mid 80s. Uh, Elliot's Lab says, how do you feel about resto modded cars? Should classics be original or upgraded? I think it's entirely down to the condition of the individual car that you start with. What pisses me off is when people start with an an original, good, solid car, and then they tear it apart to go, you know, copy and paste LS motor, copy and paste diamond stitch interior. And I'm like, Mm. you started with a good car. If If you'd started with a car that was, you know, the engine and box was missing, for example. So it was a solid (laughs) shell, and you were going to strip it to a shell anyway. Yeah. That's my personal view. And or if it's a car that's so damn rare, let's say there's only twenty left in the world. Should yeah. you resto mod it? <clears throat> it's a difficult choice, well, but I think it comes I, down to that's it. the thing. I, I I always think like um nine elevens aren't particularly rare cars. No. Because they last, people look after them, there's a lot around. So you know, High even sixties and seventies ones, there's a lot around, relatively speaking. Mm-hmm. Have at it if you want. Some of them are quite good. Yeah, they are. Um uh, E-types them... as well. E-types aren't that rare, are they? No, they're Stones not. Around. And considering, yourself, considering how badly made they were, it's I know, a surprising it's incredible, isn't it? But yeah, there's a lot of cars around. You just go, they're not that rare. It's even what's, yeah. you know, old 911s are quite valuable now, aren't they? But it's, it's odd because they're not that rare, relatively yeah. speaking. There's loads of them around. There are loads of good ones. And if yeah. you want a good original one, you will be able to find one. If you want one, where some blokes sprayed it, yeah. matte, olive, green, and put mismatched wheels on it, which is a weird thing they do, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Don't buy that. Um, but uh, yeah, I like resto mod. I think resto modding also brings in more interest to the classic car world. And in a world where piston cars are going to become increasingly endangered or very occasional use, I think having striking up interest amongst especially younger generation of like whatever this thing is. Let's say it's a Dodge Charger, and you yeah. put a modern injected motor in it, and mm. you know five link rear end, and it can handle. And I go, well, there's a place for that. Yeah, there's a totally also, a place for that. If you took something that was basically a bit tossy in its day, you know, and certainly feels terrible by modern standards, it's got cack brakes, awful <laughs> handling, really wheezy engine, you know. Yeah, yeah. Put a modern fuel injected engine in it, sort out the suspension, some new shocks on it, and all that sort of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Then you're making it much nicer to drive, which means that the person who drives it will drive it more, which means that everyone else gets a chance to see it, which is a joyful thing. Yeah. Oh, look, there's a Lancia Fulvia. There's a I mean, couple it's not a of great example because I think they're quite well engineered, aren't they? But you know what I mean. There's a couple of cars that I don't want to own in standard form ever, but I have in my head a little vision of like I, that would rest on what's yeah. so nice. There's two cars that I will do before my heart stops. I still have a dream uh, of a uh, of a fully electric Citroen DS, only because that's a car that the engine doesn't matter. It's not the no. point, is it? You'd have to no. keep the suspension. Obviously, you have to keep the looks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but if it was the engine's EV, cack, isn't it? The engine, well, it's not great. In a it's, DS. It's, it's just not the party piece. Mm. So an electric DS seems like completely in keeping. An electric CX, frankly, would be awesome. Would be really good. Yeah, mm. I'm actually building a resto mod of sorts. My Allegro is uh, a sort yeah. of resto mod. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. So yes, resto mods. Yeah, they're fine. Uh, <laughs> Ian Payne asks if I wanted to be more like Colt Seavers from the Fall Guy, should I fall from a tall building, roll a brand new car, or put a bathtub in my back garden? Did he have a bathtub in his back yeah, garden? Yeah, don't you remember the, the titles? He, he's in, in a cigar with a cigar. Oh, on. cigar! Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would start there and then work up to the other two things. Um, Matt, oh, here's a technical question. 
This is beautiful for you again. You're way better at this than I am. I don't know no, no about that. Matt Pearson, why does my friend's 24-year-old Renault camper van now stall on depressing the clutch after an alternator change? Whoa. Stall when you press the clutch. Uh, wow. That's really weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. After an alternator change. What's... Yeah, what? that's almost like the... Um, the cable is chafing and pulling on something that it shouldn't. They're not related, as far as I know. No. Whether it's a hydraulic clutch or whether it isn't, I don't think be, the systems aren't related. It's like when you go to the dentist and you you come away and you go, he's moved some of my teeth around somehow. Everything's not. Oh yeah, it doesn't right. all quite sit right. Yeah. It's like when you, it, it's like, he's only doing a, a clean and polish, but he's moved something that's not sitting right. It's like the, the the alternator change has caused some things to not sit right. Well, Pressing the clutch and it instantly stalls. Yeah, that's just bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, that is weird. It's like a, I think there's an overlap of cabling or hosing. Mm. Or I need. I, I actually want to try and find that. My brother would know. My um, brother or my brother would have three logical quick steps yes. to follow. Because <laughs> my brother. Uh, Blown Fox says, "Will you sell me your charger?" I'm going to guess. I've had a couple of people know. try and bite off me over the last twelve years, and the answer's no. Um, my my wife knows how precious it is to me and she's really supportive of me keeping it even when it we could do with the money towards the house dot 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 but i i love it i love its condition and it's and i love the drivability of that car and i would like to still drive it when i'm an old man so so that's a no unless you're going i mean basically people say everything's for sale the, the money you would have to give me would be so absurd. <laughs> it would have to be like four <laughs> times what pounds. a high price of them currently is. So uh, probably not. Um, but I appreciate people wanting to own it. Why is the most prolific lost slash discarded item on British roads a shoe? <laughs> how, how, are they, how are they lost during normal driving? And considering the numbers, why has no one ever seen one in the act of getting being lost? Actually, it's a good it's question. It's a good question. Why is it always one? Yeah. You never see a pair of shoes, do you? Someone's actually then um, forwarded me a piece from a, from a website, wkdq.com. What's the deal with so many random single discarded shoes on roadways? And? Because I can't explain As long as I can that. remember, adult shoes have littered roadways, and I've never come to a decisive conclusion as to why or how. How did they leave the car or window? Uh, I have some educated guesses. One, you store your shoes in the back of your pickup truck and they just fly out. Not really. That's a, this is an American piece, isn't yeah. it? Because that B, doesn't apply here. B, you hate something in the car like a bee or a cheating boyfriend. So you take off your shoe and throw it at him, her or it. You miss their face and out the window it goes. Actually, but, there's not, but they're not... Also, cheating boyfriend, my... it's suggesting maybe that it's a woman. But it's, it's usually trainers, aren't they? Which obviously women wear as well. But Yeah. But it's never... You know, a sort of strappy high heel. Uh, it's always a, it's always a trainer. Perhaps a sometime trainer. A, a, a more formal man's shoe. A formal man's but shoe. Thinking about it, it always feels like they're, they're men's shoes. They're bigger, aren't they? They're big shoes. They're not. You don't get sort of like. Oh, who was asking that question? Hang on. Oh, that's Darren Collins, the classic car guru. He's a good guy. He owns a DeLorean. Does I've he? I've driven it. It's the first and. Currently the only DeLorean I've ever driven. Huh. This is a good one. From Rock, from Kieran, Rockstar's Cars Kieran. Nice bloke. What's your favourite Mario Kart character and why? Oh, and then another question immediately afterwards. Why are all hybrids electric and petrol when electric and diesel would return better MPG and much less explosive in the case of an accident? Wasn't... Were there a couple of Peugeot Citroen group cars? I drove, I drove a Citroen diesel hybrid DS about ten years five, ago. five, wasn't it? And it was absolute... Dog shit. It was one of the worst cars I've ever driven. It felt like a sort of yeah. the first prototype before they'd got the software sorted. But um, someone will have bought one and they're on the second hand market, there will be one. Oh yeah. Somewhere. Okay. Yeah. I think awful. And then and they'll they'll have been put off hybrids for life. Because they'll think they're all like that. Why are they all petrol? Because I guess they, 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 the Toyota were in the vanguard of hybrids, and Japanese companies not big on diesel. Japanese don't like diesel. So it's just a way of cleaning up petrol and keeping it competitive with diesel. Probably that sort of led the charge. Is it the cold? I think it's the cold start thing as well. Because if the engine's phasing in and out, yeah. cold, diesels and cold start, they don't really like cold starts. No. In terms of warming up. But also, diesels, when they're cold, are not massively efficient. 
And they take longer to warm up than petrol. They do they? take longer to warm up. They are but, better at a constant speed, aren't they? So but, they'd be good as a range extender. Yeah, yeah. But then I suppose they're just horribly noisy. Wasn't the VW XL1 diesel? Was it? Was it? Was it petrol? Is it two cylinder? Wasn't it? Wasn't it a little two cylinder? Maybe so. Yeah. I'm thinking. I can't. God, a two cylinder diesel would sound absolutely cocking awful. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> sound like a broken imagine? washing machine. That's you a problem. just put a pneumatic drill in the back. Favorite Mario Kart character. I don't, I've never played Mario Kart. What? I'm not even into computer games anymore, and I love Mario Kart. Oh, well, go on then. What's your, who's your favourite character? Um, it is almost certainly the Toadstool, which is called <laughs> Toad. And I tend to pick... Well, there's different versions of Mario Kart. I've still got a Super Nintendo from the 90s. Um, my son's got a Nintendo Switch, and the family have a Wii. Right. And I tend to be... If you want proper, like, understeer, yeah. which it can be fun, I pick a trike. Okay. There's, there's, there's a lot of understeer on a trike. Um, and there's a car which you can pick... Oh, sorry, I got distracted by the Rover 75. Ooh, Wedgwood Blue. I knew you'd know the colour of no, that. That's something wrong with me. Um, and also, final question from the same guy. Yeah. Which were better, 70s or 80s mullets? Uh... 80s. 70s were kind of strike era and um, punk yeah, and also maybe glam rock because I mean Bowie had a mullet in yeah, like yeah. 72 mm-hmm. so I think 80s for the for the for the juxtaposition between front and rear yeah I was going to say everything went more sort of you know if you think Nick Kershaw sides for business party <laughs> at the back kind of that's that's. I suppose it's like Doctor Who's and James Bonds. The mullet that you most fondly remember is the one from your childhood, and I just think of eighties mullets. So the, the Ferrari 80s. Testarossa side streaks. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely love the Testarossa <laughs> side streaks. Do you call them streaks? Streaks. Robert Lemon here is a man after. This isn't really even a question. Oh, oh, it's kind of a question. I've become enamoured of a car sold only in Japan called the Toyota Century. Oh, Robert yeah. Lemon is preaching to the choir here. Oh, We'd seriously. love to hear your opinions on this Japanese version of a Rolls. Well, we talk about buying one of these together all the time, don't we? You and I have texted how many Every little time links? there's one on sale in the UK. Shall we? Shall, shall we? we? Shall. But the trouble is because you want the V8 and I'd rather have the V12. Yeah. Because if That's... you're going to do it, I think you've got to do it properly. V12 all the way. The yeah, later. but I just think of like just you know living with it and having to service it. And V12s, I'm just like, oh. I, I mean... Trying to service an exceptionally Ugh. rare Japan only aging luxury limo. But it's a Toyota, so it maybe won't it, won't, it. it won't need service it it ever. It's just just oil. It would it would just do do oil every year. Yeah. And that's it, a sump of oil. Fifty yeah, quid. Be fine. Yeah. They do know a little bit about them at the Toyota headquarters because the Japanese ambassador used to have one and they would service it for him. So somebody had to swat up on them how to change the oil. I wonder where that car is. It's it's as far as I'm aware. It's been sold, but I, I presume in the UK. I don't know. They wouldn't ship oh. it back to Japan. Would they? Unless it went to Europe, it might have gone to Netherlands. But it's right hand drive, so oh, yeah. it's less desirable. Yeah. Um, I need uh, to find that out. James Kearney. My question Jason Plato or Matt Neal, which is the bigger plum? I don't know that either of them are, are they? Which is the bigger plum? Plum. He spelled plum as in like plum line with a B. Do you mean plum as in the fruit? As a way to, as well, as in you or I? Who's the bigger plum? Or no, you mean which, like... my question, Jason Plato or Matt Neal, which is the bigger plum? Well, the, I mean, everyone's plummy in their own right. I know I them both know pretty well. And... Do you know Matt Neal? Yeah. Okay. I've met him once. He seemed all right. They're and both... They're both potatoes. They're good both though. good guys. Yeah, I mean, there No plumbing there. Potato probably plays up to the, the cartoon villain more. Yes. And, and blatantly enjoys it. So you can read into that how you will. Uh, Matt Mike Neal's Paul. taller and better at martial arts. Right, <laughs> is he? He's really good at martial arts. Don't, don't mess with Neil. No. Uh, Michael Cartledge asks you, what happened to your VW Squareback? Did you ever finish it? <sighs> My Squareback? When was that? Well, I, was gonna, I, I don't think I knew you. I, really I, well, well the, the 412 LS is the only... I never owned a Type 3. I never owned a Variant. Apart from the, the the 412, so I mean I've still got my Beetle, which is the only air-cooled car I own at the moment, and I've had a bay window van and I've had a split-screen van. Does it? Does it what I thought? Yeah, I thought Squareback was like one of the estate ones. It's the it? variant. Yes, yeah, yeah. the Type Three. <clears throat> oh, okay. I Thank love. You. I like them. And a friend of mine's still got one. Uh, let's move on to Andrew Murphy, who asks, which is the best motorway services? 
Gloucester. Oh. Te AKA Teletubbies, as my kids call it. Yeah. There's a grass mound on the roof. Yeah, it's a nice one. And they do, you know, um, rolled on virgin's thighs, artisan bread. Yeah, it's like that one in the Lake Districts. Yes. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah, what is that one? t um, No, not t -Bay. Is it? I forget. Now. Kendall? Is it Kendall? Maybe. It's nice, though. We, I always try and stop when I'm going between my house and my mum and dad's down in Somerset. I always try and get in, if I'm in an EV, I will try and get to that service station to do fast charge, yeah. artisanal bread, <laughs> artisanal coffee, and quality toilets. Oh, quite good. Makes a big difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I try and wrap all those up. There in... we go. Well, I can't beat that. I mean, I think those are the. You, you... But we so, have. To, can we do a shout out to Bulldog? Our, our spiritual home here at Bulldog Services. Yeah, we've inadvertently always start a Smith and Sniff in Bulldog Services. It's got a sort of unpretentious charm, and also because it's not really a motorway. It's well, it's kind of motorway, isn't it? The A one's still a motorway here. Just well, it's your sort so of it's, poor but it's your kind of second. It's your great North Road, Richard. But I quite like second division ones. I used to, if I was on the M40, I used to deliberately shun the services, go off at the Gaden turn, and there was a petrol station there that had a bog. Not a brilliant bog. Oh, that would have been cubicle. heavily used. It was, yeah, it, it was showing signs of wear and tear, but it had a bog and it had um, uh, some hot raw sausage rolls, if you want such a thing, and it had sandwich meal deals and shit like that. And I used to quite like the fact that it felt like you were going a little bit off grid. Reviving Max Power, pink or brown. <laughs> uh, well, oh my God. I still can't believe that they used to ask. That. Well, I can't believe, that, yeah, that I used to sometimes write the answers. Um, <laughs> P, Did you make it up? No, no, we didn't need to. Oh, we oh, used yeah. to get absolute deluge of post. Really? Yeah. Wow. I mean, seriously, the archive. Well, we, we'll do well, one day. We'll sit down here and we'll do a whole Max Power Q and A. Oh my gosh, P K Ripper, Harrow Freestyler, or a Rally Burner. So the, this is an old school BMX yeah. question. And someone's answered themselves and gone totally 80s mongoose super goose class. Oh, mongoose, yes, yeah. of course. Which mongoose still exists, doesn't it? I'm sure mongoose still exists. <laughs> probably. Um, um, well, I say probably, but they're, they're American, weren't they? I think BMX is still a bit of a thing. Yeah, the well, US. I, the guy at Aaron Hepworth, who, who follows me on Twitter, and he's, he's a, he paints cars for a living, he's, he's, he's into his old BMXs. He knows I've got a PK Ripper reissue, oh. which, my, which Mrs. Smith got me for my 30th birthday. Because it was always the elusive BMX that, as a kid, I saw a couple of them. They were. Were they hard to get? They were. They were expensive, right. and I was just too young. Yeah. I I I missed the BMX era just ever so slightly. Yeah, me too. I had a Rally Grifter. But they were good though. Boxer and then a Grifter. Super, I had a yeah. second-hand Boxer that my dad, bless him, he restored. He bought it off a neighbour in secret. Mm. Restored it in the shed in over about two weeks of late nights mm. after work. He hammerized it and bought Rally Burner. Stickers and pads, and made like this mashup of like boxer a, like and a, yeah. Because basically, burn. my folks couldn't afford one of the gold burners, yeah, which I really wanted. So I had this thing, but to me it was awesome because it was unique. Yeah, and Dad did a really good hammerite job. So it's a skill. Um, it is a skill. Uh, one eleven says best manual gearbox you've ever used. Okay, um, Honda. S2000 is very lovely. Someone wrote something about an S2000. It was like, what do you guys really think of an S2000? And I'm just going to I'm going to go out there with an unpopular opinion. What? I've never particularly liked them. No. I don't really like the way they look and I Do, do you not like the way they look? No, yeah, they're all right, but they're only all right and they've got no torque. I no do torque. like the way they look. I quite like the engine although you're right, it's got no torque, but I like this. It. It's, it's still a lovely engine if you prepare to thrash it. The gear change is delightful, but I thought that the chassis was just a bit toss and they were pretty snappy as well. I've, I, I, I found out this the hard way because I, I the first time out. I drove one, did you? I didn't spun it. On I, a track, I, But it was by luck and good judgment, I think, because on a, a roundabout. The same roundabout where I later crashed the TT, or maybe it must have been later because I wouldn't have driven like a knob there. I think it's a, I think it's great that there's there's a cult following to it and it and it was a high moment for Honda. Mm. But it's the just later not. ones are meant to be better. Yeah, apparently they're not. very sensitive to alignment, and if you get the alignment sorted out, they're a little bit better handling wise. Yeah. But they're just it was just disappointing somehow. I know it's just not a car I want to own. No, I, I think do the like gear the way shift they look. is mega. The gear gear shift, shift is lovely though. Gear shift like sexy gear shifts for me. Um, Vauxhall Chevette, if you ever get the chance to drive one, even a really slow one point two, the mm. gear shift is wonderful. Ah. Two. Passat GL5 slash Audi um, Audi Quattro. Really? Short little knob. Yeah, really, really it. lovely. 
Cooper. I, my Audi Coupe was just mega. My mate had a GL5 Passat, and the gear shift was just so good. Wow. Interesting. Um, well, Pagani Zonda gear shift's quite good, but I mean, unlikely to drive one very often. Um, uh, what else what is else good? What has an awesome shift? Um, I mean, 911. 911s have nice yeah. shifts. What's peak 911 manual shift? 997? They weren't good. I, you know, obviously, I went and bought a PDK one because I couldn't decide. Uh, but yeah, the shift in a manual 997 is it's quite special. Lovely. A GT3 uh, 911. Oh my lord! With, Actually, a, yeah. with a Manuel in it. Oh my word! It's proper. That's one of those cars where sometimes you just change gear for the sake of it. Oh, I I constantly did. Like I was pretending to be in bullet. <laughs> <laughs> pointless downshifting. Pointless upshifting. Yeah. Pointless. Like a bloke down. I used to work with, he just sometimes do that on the motorway. It's just these all go. Oh, I'm changed gear for a while. Just what? knock it down from fifth to fourth. Yeah. What at seventy? Yeah. What an absolute. Well, I used to go. What are you doing? Just changing gear. Just thought. Complete it. balloon knot. <laughs> Has the pressure of creating Smith and Sniff strained your relationship? <laughs> I like the thought that there's a pressure to create, the pressure to sit in a car well, it, and talk shit. It's, it's, I mean, we'd be doing it anyway, so we we talked about doing it for a long time before we actually did it. Yeah, and we've all and we mostly did it as a hobby because it we we still don't really make money. We break even, I think. Just about, yeah. So as a business decision, it's not it's a great not, decision. It's not, it's not a great buzz loss on trust. <laughs> <even on. laughs> From Drive Alternative, it's just a random one of pick. What cars have you had that you wish you'd never got rid of? The ones that got away. Um, for me, Jag XJR. X308, the last of the steel bodied ones. Four litre supercharged engine. Oh, yeah. 370 horsepower. That's just a lovely car. Is that the straight six? No, V8. That's the V8. But, yeah. Um, never gave me a lick of trouble. Didn't yes. cost that much to run, really, apart from fuel. Well, Every time I took it to the garage for a service of me, I'd assume it was going to cost me a grand, and it never did. Not really? even close. Wow. It was, it was, even when you I had, had a good to, one, though. You bought a good one. It was a really low mileage one for its age, and it was immaculate. And yeah. um, the man I bought it off made me promise that it wasn't for like dicking around on telly with him. I, was, I so, had to sort of basically solemnly swear on my life it was my personal use only. Yeah. And then I just wasn't using it, and it was far too nice to not use, so I sold it to TV's Richard Hammond. And then he... One day he came in the office and he was very shamefaced and it's like he's like he had got bad news or something and I was like what's that? And he went I, I, can, I, look, I don't know how to tell you this but I've sold that jag of yours but I've sold it to someone who's going to really take care of it. It's a guy I know in the next village and he's like he's a total jag nut and he's going to really look after it. And I was like it's not my car. It's not your car anymore. You could have sold it to a scrap merchant. I can't stop you but he was like he felt this it was almost you know it's such a beautiful car it's passed on but again he wasn't using it's it. It's the custodianship thing. Yeah. What would be yours? A uh, car that I shouldn't have... I bet you've got about ten. Yeah, you? that's the problem. There's a, there's a, there's a few, actually. Um, sold my Chevy Volt, and that was a really good car. But I, I just I wasn't using it enough, and um, that's that. Cars I shouldn't have sold. My God, I've got to see. I've got to go into that old Word document that I've got with all the list of cars on and go. That was yeah. That was fine to sell. That one wasn't fine. I sold a car, one of the rarest cars you can probably find, called a Wright Craft scooter car, which is a 1930s micro car. I found one, and it took me a long time to get the guy to sell it to me. And it was a restoration project, and I sold it because a guy kept badgering me and I never actually drove it and I would have liked to have kept that because it was so comically weird and mm. awful so most people don't even know what a right craft scooter car is but google it uh, yeah there's been others uh, Gren oh yeah Granada there was a Mark 1 Granada 3 litre GL that I had and I bought it for tuppence super solid Roman bronze bl black vinyl roof sunroof what saloon or coupe? saloon uh -huh. And it was lovely, uh -huh. and I should have always kept that car because I've still got that itch for another Mark One Granada, and I'm and I've got to scratch it again at some point. I think you can get cream for it now. Yeah, yeah, but I want that cream to be blue oval <laughs> cream. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, we're going to see some amazing road rage. Oh wow! Oh, this is great. What happened? Did you see the what guy just the guy it? drove this way and just swung in, and oh. it's one way. I mean, to be fair, oh. I 
He did it very slowly. It's hardly a massive problem, is it? Fuck me. This is Heart Attack Central. The guy's he's massive and he's heaving on yeah. a fag. What's he driving? Kia Seed. Is that a seed? Yeah. The, oh, look, look the wife's the embarrassed. State of him. Look, he's got a private plate on it as Man. well. Is it wrong that when someone like that is so raggy about a minor incident that I would have quite enjoyed it if the guy driving that van turned out to be like a taekwondo expert and had just lamped his head off? Dish. Actually, people do taekwondo and really good at it. They tend to be more controlled, don't they? He's just got, well, that's what it's like, about. giving you a warning. It's like now. a boxer. Don't make me do this. Yeah. You're still shouting at me, you fat smoking man. <laughs> uh, final warning. Don't, I don't want to do this, but I will have to do it. That's what Patrick Swayze did, the character yeah. in Roadhouse. Yes. You it's know, his way on the highway. It, yeah, it was, wasn't it? What would be your favourite in-car lunch? Would you be tempted to also do a review on it? Well, we've talked about um, car lunching, the, and it's, it, it's divisive on Smith & Sniff. Um, so what I would say is my... F- what is it, is it a favourite? My favourite in-car lunch, I think, provided we had sufficient napkins and chicken food. I think, yeah, I, I would love a full curry with full all curry. of the accessories on the dash, like <laughs> like the full everything, side dishes, <laughs> those things dips. with candles in that keep stuff warm. Oh, amazing! And we'd have the we'd have a hot stone or something to keep it sizzling. Yeah, yeah. We'd have loads of paper towels. Um, that would be cool, but but practically, my, probably my favourite car lunch is it's a sushi because yeah. it's neat, yeah, and it's full of taste, yeah, and I can I can control the game a bit. Uh, control so I the game. A bit. <laughs> Whereas ah. if, if you if I had a Rogan Josh on the go, it, oh, it could go crack. Very dangerous. Um, on that note, I'm starving. Should we go get some lunch? Yeah. <laughs>